99 Hustles. 99 Hustles. 99 Hustles. Welcome to the 99 Hustles podcast. I'm your host, Nick Carter. And I'm your co-host, International Fees. And today we're joined by another another brilliant, dope guest, um, Aimee Ibanez. Welcome yes. to the show, man. Appreciate you joining us today. Yeah, thank you so much for inviting me. It's a pleasure to be here. Absolutely. Um, as you guys can probably tell, he's, uh, he's a young man at the, at the tender age of 20 years old. He already owns and operates his own business. He owns and operates a vending machine business uh, titled Vending Bites, which you can see with his very, uh, very yeah, interesting got dope shirt. <laughs> yeah, got to stay on brand. Got to stay on brand. <laughs> got to make sure uh, I advertise. <laughs> absolutely. Always. Uh, he owns and operates a, a bunch of different vending machines that uh, sell things ranging from candy and uh, desserts all the way through, you know, claw arcade machines. Uh, in addition to that, he's also a YouTube influencer with over 370,000 subscribers on YouTube, uh, where you can follow him to get uh, along on his vending machine business journey. Uh, but before we get into that, uh, Jaime, just tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, how you got started in this industry. Yeah, of course. So it all actually started back in summer of 2018. That's whenever I graduated high school. And after I graduated high school, um, just like a lot of people out there, I wasn't really sure what I was going to do. I for sure wasn't going to go to college, even if I wanted to. I, don't, I didn't come from a family that had enough money you know, for me to go to college. And I wasn't even like the smartest kid in, in school to get scholarships and stuff like that. So college was, was out of the question. It was either you know, start a business or just keep a regular job forever. Um, at that time, I was working at a concession stand. I was already selling chips, candy, and all that good mm. stuff. So one day, you know, summer ended. Everyone was going back to school. And I was like, you know what? I have about $5,000 saved up from working my job. And um, so I, I, I went on, on YouTube, and I searched up ways to make money as a teen. And one of the videos that came up was actually another vending machine owner. And he was making a video where he went to a few of his uh, vending machine locations. It was actually gumball machines. It wasn't like soda or snack like I do, mm. but it was still the same uh, concept. He went to his locations. He was like putting gumballs in the machine, collecting a whole bunch of coins. And at the end of the video, he actually showed how much he collected. And after he counted everything up, it was around like $1,000 or like 1500 after 30 days of the machines, you know, sitting at the location. So after I watched that video, I pretty much like instantly got hooked with the, the industry and I was like, you know what, I'm going to give this a try, see how it goes. So I tried doing like some research on the, on the business. And at that time there wasn't really much out there. There was no, no other videos. There was no, sure. nobody teaching you how to get started. And yeah. just for, just for a point of reference, like what time frame was this? Like how many, how long ago was this that you were starting in this? Uh, this was still in 2018 after okay. summer. Yeah. Okay. So around like August. Um, yeah, so I tried doing research. There wasn't really that much info. So I, I pretty much just took a, a huge risk. I, I went online and I was looking for some vending machines, uh, specifically like soda or snack. And after I, I actually found one and it was a seller that was selling that it was a seller that was selling his machine already on location, uh, which means that I didn't have to like take it out or find or move it. Uh, as soon as I buy it, it's already making money from day one. And he wanted like 2,500. So I, I did buy the machine on location. I got the keys and everything. And the crazy part about it, this was like my biggest you know, problem when I first started. The day after I bought that machine on location, I got kicked out oh, from wow. the location. Yeah, yeah. So the manager called me and he was like, hey, you know, we, we don't want the machine here no more. And now that I think about it, I'm pretty sure the previous he old guy, yeah, yeah, for sure. So yeah, I was like, I didn't know what to say. I didn't know anything about the business. I, I didn't know if I was going to negotiate with him or, or, or mm. what. And I didn't have any storage place back at home to bring back the machine until I find another place. You could have so, put it in your room. Uh, I, no, I, <laughs> <laughs> I bad for have, I'm sure it's bad for business to, you know, to be your own customer too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's what happened. And I had seven days to go and take the machine out. So the day after I got that call, I literally sat down in my room for hours and hours and getting in contact with, you know, hundreds of owners. 
until I got my first yes. Uh, so pretty much, you know, I sat there until I got another location. And I did eventually. It took a few hours. I got a barber shop. And so, yeah, I moved the machine into the barber shop and it's been there for the last two years. I still have it. Wow. Now, yep. <clears throat> when you when you went online and you, you know, you found this seller and um, obviously I'm sure you probably jumped at the at the first sight of it being like, oh, it's already on location. This is great. Mm -hmm. And then that was immediately met with like a setback. What kept you going to continue down this path when the very first time you tried it, yeah. you're automatically hit with a big yeah, yeah. Uh, obstacle? Mm -hmm. That's a good question. I would say um, how much money I had put into it already. Um, mm -hmm. I didn't know the price I paid for that machine. I didn't know if it, if it was a good deal or not. Yeah. Um, now I would say that it was, I paid like half of what the machine is worth brand new. So mm -hmm. I got, I did get a, a really good deal. But yeah, I didn't know if I was going to sell the machine. Um, the only choice I had was to see if I can find one before I get kicked out. If I, if I couldn't find one, I would have most likely sold the mm. machine. So, I mean, you have, you have, you have uh, a very interesting story. Like I think for me, what stands out is just how young you right. were to be thinking, you know, having this entrepreneurial mindset. So like you walk us through, like, so you bought that first, um, store that it started to like, you know, bring in a little in, uh, revenue. And then you start to think like, you know, that entrepreneurial mindset, I could have, I could have another one. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take that money. And like, you know, like, how did you, how did you like, how were you thinking like that at 18 years old? Like just to like <laughs> expansion, man. Well, I would say um, something I did back in high school since like freshman and sophomore year, I, I, I sold chips. So I was one of those kids walking around with a plastic bag. Boy, we, know, all knew, we all knew that kid. Yeah, I was <laughs> that kid. Uh, so from high school, I kind of already, you know, had the whole thing of selling chips and drinks yeah, and yeah, candy yeah. and stuff. Uh, but after I had bought that first machine, I remember driving back home and I was so excited. You know, I had the keys in my hand and I was like, it was technically my first ever official business I ever started. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was just that feeling that kept me going um, just because it felt really good actually starting something, especially so young. You know, a lot mm -hmm. of people my age, they were either going to college, they still had a job. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, it was just a feeling that kept me and going. And then so, like, you decided, like, you know, you're, you're making a couple of dollars on, from the first machine. You're like, you know, were, were you, did you have, like, a spend first mentality? Like... You know, I'm making a couple bucks on my own. I'm gonna spend it, or like, you were kind of like, I'm gonna save this and. Like, were you like, were you planning on expanding, and growing, yeah, and, and growing and buying more machines? Is that always like in your, you know, your plans, or did that just kind of go, a, a, you know, along while mm -hmm. you were, you know, seeing how it went? Yeah, so that was the plan. Yeah, that was the plan from the very beginning. It, mm. it's, it's still even the plan to this day. Yeah. But at that time, I, that was half my savings. I spent twenty five hundred, so I had an extra twenty five. And after I, I had uh, finally moved that machine into the new spots, and it was you know it was good there. Now I was trying to figure out what else can I do to keep growing. You know, buy more machines or you know what I was gonna do. And I had 2,500, I went online again, see if I can find other locations for sale. And I, I did find another one. It was actually a route with three locations and it had like nine machines. And the seller wanted around like eight or $9,000. And I had offered him, I believe it was like 5,000 or 4,000, so, something like that. And he did take it, I believe it was like 5,000, but he did take it. And you know, of course I didn't have the other 2,500 because I spent half of it. So what I did is I literally pretty much ask anybody I could for money. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, I, I did have a job, but in order to get another 2,500, that would have taken months. Mm -hmm. So I literally asked everyone from like family members, my girlfriend, um, friends, and I eventually did get the other half. And that's how I got into my-, my So uh, what was that process like? Was that like a, a big- you know, hurdle for you to, to like have the confidence to ask people for money. Yeah, I'm yeah. Just, I mean, to ask family, friends, your girlfriend, mm -hmm. it's not an easy thing to ask somebody for money, especially when they're like, dude, you're 18, 19 years old. Why yeah, am I yeah. going to give you this kind of money? Yeah. How, how did you go about doing that? So the first person I actually asked was my girlfriend. She, she was working at that time and she gave me a, the, the biggest chunk of it actually. 
and mm. the rest of it was from like her a few of her family members as well like her sisters and stuff oh, and they're yeah they're all like really close um i wasn't really as close with them like you know she was of course but i don't know i mean i kind of just took i just asked them and the worst that could happen was them saying no. See, I, I'll tell you what, that's interesting is like, you definitely have to have some type of self-confidence. Like, mm, yeah. I think something interesting about you is that like, you know, a lot of influencers and especially like young influencers, they can operate their business without speaking to people face to face. You know what I mean? They're building websites, they're doing Shopify, they're not, you're out there like talking to like owners <laughs> of right. like hotels and negotiating right, yeah. with people like twice your age. Like, 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 how is that? Like, do you feel like, you know what I mean? You have to like, so t- tell us, tell us the worst experience you had dealing with, with a business owner yeah. where, you, where you just knew that they didn't take you seriously because you're, because of your age. Um, well, it's not as, as bad as it could be, but mm-hmm. I will say whenever I first got started, the way I got started wasn't like other people do. I was, I was really shy at the very beginning. Oh, wow. Okay. Like, so I, I would not go up to businesses whenever I first started. That's yeah, just, yeah, I, I wouldn't yeah. do that. What I would do is either buy routes or do everything through like social media, like emailing and stuff. But for sure, eventually, especially being in this business, you will get hang of, you will get the hang of it. And even if you're a shy person, um, it will like help you with that. Just cause mm-hmm. like you said, you do have to talk to owners eventually and managers and stuff you have to sell yeah you do have to be able to sell you know the yeah. service but yeah it wasn't as bad i didn't really have any issues with any any owners yeah, now yeah. what i do actually whenever i now whenever i go out and even back then whenever i talk to an owner to try to get a location i never ever told him that i was the owner uh, just because of how young i was yeah 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 yeah. and that's something i don't tell a lot of people that i did uh, but that's what I did just because, you know, like you said, I was an 18 year old kid right. walking up to, so building. you knew that at that, even yeah. at that point, you were like, I can't, they're going to treat me yeah, like, smart. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like I'm not legit if I'm the owner of it, that's really smart. That's actually something that, you know, Nick and I, we've, there's other business owners that we know that, you know, literally tell us, I don't want people to know I actually own this mm-hmm. for multiple reasons, whether that be for, you know, safety or whether that be for just the perception. Celebrity or, yeah. Uh, they don't want people to know like this is so-and-so's restaurant because mm-hmm. that's going to dictate the experience. But mm-hmm. that's, I mean, yeah, you're why you're very obviously wise beyond your years. Um, where does that wisdom come from? Is that from family? Is that from books you read? Like where, where do you get that um, ability to just, you know, know the, these kind of things that usually people don't realize until years down the road. Mm-hmm. Honestly, I'm not really sure. I mean, there's not really anybody coming from my family that's that, you know, has a business yeah. or does anything just close to what I have been doing. Mm-hmm. Um, I never was the type to read any books. So I didn't, you know, read any entrepreneur or financial books. Um, I would just say coming I, I would say it's motivation. That's the thing. Mm-hmm. That's the biggest thing is motivation. Just because coming from I wasn't, we didn't grow up poor. You know, we always had food and everything we needed, but I wasn't that kid with like nicest things. Now it's not, of course, not just about like materialistic things, but it's about being able to be financially secure and coming from, like I said, coming from a family that we basically kind of live paycheck to paycheck and it it all went to food. It was just a motivation on wanting to, Try, try to grow something into, yeah, yeah a business, yeah. basically. Yeah, man. Um, yeah, middle class, man. And, that, and that's the story. A lot of people, you know, breaking out of like a cycle of paycheck to paycheck. Mm-hmm. And the way to do that is entrepreneurship, you know? And yeah, that's interesting. You didn't, you know, you, it wasn't even any, any books. You just kind of like just learned it from, from life. Mm-hmm. You have those entrepreneurs that, you know, just learn from their experiences. Um, you, mentioned, you mentioned earlier about routes. So that's an aspect of the vending machine business could you just explain that i'm a little unsure about what what is a route so is that like a set of vending machines you can buy at one time or like what is that yeah so it's basically a route is more than one location so it can, okay. it, can it can be like a route of like five locations and okay. then each location would have like two machines so mm-hmm. that's basically locations together got you and people like to like sell like routes or like multiple vend- vending machines at one time yeah, that, yeah, that's the thing in vending. People sell off their either only one, it could be like a location by itself or like a whole route 
you know, whenever people get out of the business, they do eventually sell off their whole route, which could be like 30, 40 locations. Gotcha. Gotcha. So um, you're, you're starting to build up a portfolio of vending machines. Um, when did you, you know, decide to, you know, go ahead and get the LLC, start vending bites and really mm-hmm. become, you know, form a, form a business? So I, the first year that I started, it was in August of 2018. And for the first, the remaining of the year, I didn't get any of my licenses or like permits and stuff like that. I'm not sure why. I mean, I didn't really know what I needed. I just, you know, went out, got my machine and I was making money. Yeah, yeah, Um, yeah. But I started doing more research on what I had to get. And I pretty much waited like six months until the new year came. And that's whenever I finally got everything I needed. And you made it. And that's when you created Vending Bites as, as mm-hmm. just like one brand. So like, I guess that ties back into my last question about routes. So like your job as the owner of Vending, of vending Bites is to own, you would say like now you have your set routes or mm-hmm. just one route. Yeah. Right. Okay. And are you, are you locating just in one city or are you in like multiple cities? So right now I am in Dallas. Well, I'm in like a city nearby Dallas, but I do operate all, basically all over. I'm mm-hmm. in mean, maybe five or six different cities wow. uh, just because, you know, D- DFW is a pretty huge place. Yeah, yeah. And um, that that is one of the things I don't like about running my business right now is because most of my locations are, you know, 40 minutes away, an hour away. Are you the one checking on them or do you have other people? You have people that work for you that run and in, in, in trying to check on them? Uh, right now it's just me. And for example, if I'm like busy making a video or something or editing, yeah. um, and I can't go out, then my girlfriend would go out. Okay, and service okay. them. Is the next step to kind of build out a team to kind of do all of those duties that you talked about, you don't necessarily enjoy just cause it's, you know, all over the different place and you have mm-hmm. to actually physically do it. Is that like the next, your next step here is the kind of building out a team to kind of take on some of those tasks? Uh, yeah, that's actually, that's the goal. One day, eventually, you know, have route drivers and a whole yeah, warehouse. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I, I'm not sure when that's going to happen, just because even right now with 30 vending machines on location, it's still part time and I still have a bunch of free time. I can pretty much go to every every location in two days and not have to go back for True. two weeks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So True. that'll probably be a good one until I actually have to hire somebody 30 else. 30 machines. Jeez, that's a lot to, a lot to keep track of, man. Mm-hmm. And you had to keep track of the inventory and everything and, yeah. um, and keeping the products. Where, where, where do you stock the products from? Like, are you, you like go online and order from like, you, cause you can't order candy from Alibaba. Yeah. <laughs> you know what yeah, I mean? I don't know. You have to, uh, where, where do you stock the product? How do you stock the products? So the biggest method right now is I have like a Sam's club down the streets mm-hmm. and that's where I get most of my stuff, everything from chips, candy, chocolate, everything else. Yeah, now, yeah, yeah. for example, I do go to Walmart for my bottled drinks just because Sam's only had in bottles. They only have like Coke, Dr. Pepper and Sprite, uh, uh, which isn't a huge variety, but I do go to Walmart and that's where they have like the big red, the squirt, the root beer and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And, uh, but for example, also I do have a hotel where I sell like deodorant, toothpaste and a few other like hygiene products. And I get those stuff from Amazon. So do you find that one, I guess, type of vending machine works better than the others? Like it's the candy and soda vending machine still like the most profitable, best way to go about it. Or is this new? Cause I've seen things like, you know, there's healthy vending machines mm-hmm. And you just made mention of like selling deodorant and toothpaste. Like mm-hmm. how is that market evolving? So I would say that healthy vending, you know, like you said, there, there is some healthy vending machines out there and people that only do that. In my opinion, you know, there, I mean, nobody really buys healthy stuff. I have put healthy stuff in my machines and it just sits there and it, it, it expires. Wow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So a healthy, if you get into healthy vending, there's not a whole lot of money into it. That makes you know, sense. Any location that you can put a machine in, nobody's going to want healthy items. Everyone's going to always want a Coke, a bag of chips. Exactly. You know what I'm thinking? The reason that makes sense to me is because like buying from a vending machine is like an impulse thing, right? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? When somebody's probably like, not a healthy decision to begin yeah, with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When somebody's mm-hmm. chasing an impulse, they're chasing something they know that they probably shouldn't be eating or mm-hmm. drinking, like a Coke and, you know, a bag of gummy gummy bears or something like that that makes perfect sense it'd be like going to the casino and they have like a savings account uh, option (laughs) yeah yeah like (laughs) you want to just deposit your money into a savings account you're like huh yeah yeah that's not why i'm here 
I'm here yeah. for it. Go. So, you, uh, so, you, so you have 30 locations. Like, what, what, what locations do you find that like perform the best for you? Or is it, is it still like, um, barber shops, um, restaurants, apartment complexes, or like, ho- like hotel? You mentioned a hotel earlier too. Yeah. Like, what, what, what location do you find perform perform best? So right now my biggest look, well, my biggest location used to be my hotel hotels in vending are always going to be some of your best and yeah, top yeah, yeah, perform- yeah. performers. Just mm-hmm. so many people go through there. Uh, but recently it's kind of, it's been kind of slow, you know, eventually some locations do slow down. Uh, but one of my other biggest locations is actually just a regular manufacturing warehouse. I'm not sure what they do, but they have around 75 employees. And it does really well, maybe around 2000 or 1500 to 2000 a month. Mm -hmm. Now, um, is that profit or is that gross sales? It's gross. Um, and vending, there's a, there's a rule of thumb. Profit would be about 50% of what you pull out. So around half would always be the, the profit. Yeah. 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 Interesting. See, those are those are tough things to learn without without, without going to college for. Well, yeah, finances. you know, not having that formal it's education, like budget, not really like, being an entrepreneur. You, you understand guy, that. Like, you you yeah. understand profit, revenue, like how to put the money back in, how to understand how to budget your margins out properly, and everything. That's that's, that's difficult to learn, man. So was that all trial and error for you? So you didn't technically go to a, a, a you know college or maybe you know take classes or you know learn from other you know mm-hmm. business owners how, how did you how was that process in dealing with all the things that go behind like the behind the scenes stuff like the inventory the margins mm-hmm. like taxes like how was that process for you yeah. uh so it's it's for sure you learn everything as you go um yeah. it's kind of just you know step by step for example for products at first you know i didn't know what i was going to put in the machine i kind of just went to sam's picked out a whole bunch of stuff that i liked <laughs> and I put it into the machine yeah, and yeah. um that every location is going to be different you know of course they don't all like the same things but once you put product in the machine you can see what they do buy and what they don't and that's kind of how i figured out over the last couple of years what you know what the majority of the people like mm-hmm. and as for repairs that was one of the you know biggest headaches whenever i first started especially yeah. with having no help at all um you know machine breaks down i don't I don't really know how to fix it. Mm. So what I have done is I would literally just sit there and try to take things apart, put it back together until I learn. And that's you just kind of, wow. yeah, that's kind of how I did it. Wow. That's crazy, man. <laughs> so you could just come in and like, right. Like almost kind of like diagnose the, diagnose the issue. Like, yeah, so- like on the, in the, in that image in your back, you got a vending machine where like the, the candy bar looks like it's stuck. Right here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you could like fix that <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> now now how how have things changed uh with with uh covid19 and you know you play you had vending machines in like barbershops which i'm sure aren't as packed or busy yeah, as yeah. Before. like yeah. how yeah. how has that shifted things for you so the out of all of my places i had the only one that actually shut down was the barbershop you know yeah. every oh, barbershop was shut down but every other location was still open. Um, of course, they did, they, even t- today, they do have to check our temperature, got to wear a mask. And some locations, for example, I have a nursing home. Uh, mm. Before we go inside, they give you like a whole gown, like a, a medical gown to wear uh, before you go inside. But it, it did slow down some locations because they had less employees working and stuff. But we actually managed to double our business during COVID. Um, wow. I'm not sure how, but we were able to, you know, double in locations. Um, so yeah, it wasn't as bad as it could have been. Would, would you say this is like a good time? Is, is this a good time to enter the vending business and, or, or would you, you know, recommend waiting COVID out? Um, I would say it depends on where you live. Um, I know here in Texas, especially here in Dallas, I wouldn't say people didn't take the virus that seriously, but mm. I mean, even during the middle of the pandemic, pandemic, everyone was out and out and about, but so it wasn't, everyone was still going to work and stuff. I, um, I mean, yeah. And, and, and with that being said, like somebody getting into the vending game, like now it, it's a little different from like when you first started right now, there's a lot yeah. of, a lot of resources, a lot of people in that space, 
telling people and showing people how to enter enter into the space themselves. What mm-hmm. would you say is like for somebody for, for for a new like what is like what would be like a misconception of like what people think the vending game is all about, but like what it's not really. You know what I mean? Like yeah, what would yeah. you say is like a misconception about the game? So I feel like a whole bunch of other people before they get into vending and then they do get into it. A lot of people say that the biggest mis- mis- I can't even misconception, say <laughs> misconception. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, they would say that it's not really as passive income as you think. Yeah. Now, I would kind of really, really disagree with that uh, because, yes, you do have to sometimes go out, fix a machine that doesn't take money or something. Um, but at the end of the day, like I told you, even with all the other machines I have, having 30, I can have, run my whole route and not return for two weeks. In my opinion, I mean, I, would, I wouldn't say anything is truly passive income, mm-hmm. but I would say that it's still pretty, you know, pretty, yeah, pretty hands off. Yeah, there's not really a lot of work. It's not like every day you're going on site to yeah. do something. So, so that's what gives you enough time to like, to like work on the YouTube channel. Yeah, that's how I still make videos. So, yeah, 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 man. So like, that's, I guess that's the next thing we, we, we want to talk to you about is like, yeah, it sounds like you have a lot of free time because like the, the vending machines are kind of operating on them on their own. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, that gives you time to like, you know, create the videos. You got a lot of, a lot of cool content, a lot of dope content. Um, are you also coaching and you have courses? Are you doing that thing too? Or are you just doing the, the, the content following yourself? Um, well, I'm glad you asked just because my, my first ever course comes out in like two, three days. Word, perfect. That's a 99 <laughs> Hustles exclusive. 99 Hustle exclusive. You yes, already hear first. <laughs> um, so yeah, I mean, I never really had any mentorship programs that I, I, I released. And I, I'm not going to lie. I sometimes regret it, especially whenever I first started making videos. Because in the first year or the first six months of making YouTube videos about vending, every single video was blowing up you know mm. millions and millions of views and i mean of course if i would have released the course at that time it would have done really really yeah. well yeah, but yeah, um, yeah. I, I, the reason why i didn't do that is because it was only six eight months you know starting my vending business i didn't feel like i had enough knowledge to actually yeah, yeah. teach people mm. especially how to find actual good locations yeah a lot, a lot of people go through that, man. So, like, like now that you've you, you've been in the game a, a, a little bit, you, now you feel like you have that expertise to go ahead and release the course. Yeah, yeah, I have. I'm I'm showing like five or six different methods to find locations, and I will give you. I will say half around fifty to sixty percent of the locations I have now. Those I didn't try to get. They all reached out to me. Wow. So I'm teaching people how to not so really how, go out. So how does that work? So do businesses, um, you know, look up or Google vending machine operators and you just start getting, or is it because they see your machines out at different places? Um, it's a little bit of everything. The main thing is just being out on, you know, Google and stuff and Facebook and knowing how yeah, to yeah. properly run ads and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Now, now is that, what's that relationship like with business owners? Like, you know, is that generally like a, like a 50, 50 kind of conversation where, you know, you're both um, talking splits here or is it more so you're just like a tenant of theirs? Like you're paying rent to put it on that location. Mm. So the way I'm going to be teaching people t- to find locations is by making it as a service. So you're going to be, whenever you talk to the owner, you're going to be offering your service and you're never going to be bringing up commission just because, you know, you don't want to pay any rent. You don't want to pay commission when you first get started. Out of all the locations I have, I only pay commission in one. And that's the first one I ever had, which was a barbershop. Mm. And all the other ones, I don't pay commission. And that's, that's the thing that a lot of people don't know. People think that you have to give the owner something. Because um, a lot of the times they do ask for, you know, a percentage. But there is ways to, like, work around that and not pay anything. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, that's how, that's how it works. You're a hustler, man. Yeah, Yo, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna tell you right now, your YouTube, your your, your course is going to you're going Blow you're up. gonna do numbers. <laughs> Hopefully, that's the goal. Six months from so, now, man. <laughs> so so, talk about that like, that YouTube lifestyle. So, was this something because you mentioned before when you first looked it up, there wasn't much out there to kind of help you out? Mm-hmm. Is that is that the reasoning behind you know? trying YouTube out? Like, I mean, a lot of people try YouTube and then there's people that do YouTube. You yeah, clearly yeah, do yeah. YouTube. Mm-hmm. How did you, what, talk to us through that process. Like, what was that like, you know, from deciding to put yourself in front of the camera to 
now having, you know, a million views. So whenever, before I posted my first video, that was maybe like five, six months after I started my business. And at that time, the, the first guy I ever saw making a video about it, he was still making videos. And then there was maybe like one or two other people that started making videos about it. Uh, but these were like older gentlemen that they just basically gave you the, give you information. It's not like entertainment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, so what I did is I had a I had a camera already because I used to, I've been trying to make YouTube videos since like middle school. So <laughs> you're trying I, to go viral before viral. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I had a camera already, and one day I just you know I had to go run my locations, and I was like, you know what, I'm gonna take my camera with me. I'm gonna record pretty much what I do, uh, you know, throughout the whole day. And yeah, I took my camera on. I recorded me going to buy product. Uh, filling the machines and then counting the money and showing people how much I made in the end, just like the first video I ever saw. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, um, yeah I tried to make it, you know, entertaining. I added music, sound effects, and everything <laughs> you could, you know. And um, yeah, for some reason, I knew it was gonna do good just because around a week or two weeks after I posted it, it had around like a thousand or five, like a couple thousand views. And that's not a lot, but for my first ever that's video on the channel, first time video. Yeah. yeah. And I, I didn't really understand why it was getting, <laughs> getting views. Yeah, who the hell is clicking on this? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> um, yeah. But ever since I posted my first ever video from the very beginning, I, I stayed consistent. So even mm. though I didn't have a lot of subscribers mm. or views, I was posting a video every three days at wow. the most every four days. And I actually stopped doing that like a year ago. Cause it does, it is a lot of work, mm -hmm. but um, yeah, I po pretty much posted every three days uh, for that first month. And I remember 30 days after I posted my first ever video, it was around like 10, 15,000 views. And then literally out of nowhere, a few days after 30 days, it just starts blowing up and it, it's at 30. Now, were you doing ads at this point or it was just organically getting views? It was, it was all organic. I wasn't promoting it anywhere. Um, I'm not sure how, I mean, I guess it was just the algorithm and eventually in like a month and a half, it was already at a, a million views and wow. yeah. And then now I think that video is almost at like 8 million. Sheesh. So I'm sure that was a nice email from YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> the thing, uh, yeah. The thing that sucked about that, about, uh, getting so many views so quick, I mean, you, you know this for YouTube, you can't get paid until you have a thousand subscribers and yeah, yeah, four. Yeah. Um, so the first half of the, I did, you know, eventually get those hours and, and stuff. So I applied for the, the monetization and stuff, but they still have to like send you like a code and, and stuff before you can actually apply. So for the first like 500,000 views of that video, I actually didn't get paid because I wasn't monetized, wow. but just something to throw out there. Interesting. Yeah, man. I'm sure you'll teach that in your course too for people that want to follow your YouTube steps. Yeah, it'll be a separate one, man. Separate yeah, one a separate for, course uh, <laughs> for influencer <laughs> marketing. Do you so, have, um, speaking of influencer marketing, is, is that also in, involved as well? Do any brands reach out to you for, for any YouTube videos? Uh, well, I've done a few sponsorships, uh, just like r random brands. Yeah, but yeah. for the course, I'm actually so excited to release it just because I'm going to, uh, I made a deal with one of the actually the biggest vending machine manufacturer in pretty much the U S mm. wow. and um, it's going to be given, you know, everyone that wants to get into vending, they can go and buy a brand new machine finance. Directly. It. Yeah. They don't have to um, make any payments for the first three months and they get like $150 off their machine through wow. my link. So now do you think that you mentioned before that before, you know, the videos that you saw were just generally older, older gentlemen, mm -hmm. Is that what you see in the industry itself? Like it's generally, you know, ran by people that are much older than you, than you. Back then for sure. Yes. Uh, but now after all the videos, and everything, <laughs> after you your videos, of... you change the game. <laughs> <laughs> that's a, that's an influencer. That's an influence and influencer. Yeah. So there is for sure a lot of young people now getting into how, how, how much. So, okay. So when you started, you started out with 2,500 bucks. Mm -hmm. Um, for somebody who wants to start a, uh, their own vending business tomorrow, like how much money would you recommend um, getting into that game with? 
should somebody start with like a drink machine first mm-hmm. or should they start with like food or like how somebody starting tomorrow in mm-hmm. COVID, like what, 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 what do you think they should start with? So if you were starting tomorrow and you wanted to buy either a snack or a soda, I would start with the soda. Those are way much easier to place be before the snack, just because mm-hmm. you can put it in like an auto shop or a barber shop. Um, and also, even having a soda and a snack next to each other, a soda machine is always going to make a lot more than, than, than snacks. But, yeah, so I would get a soda machine. And, um, I mean, what, what was the rest of the question? I'm sorry. Like how much do you think somebody would oh, need how much? to have, like, yeah, to invest into it to start? Uh, so this is also going to depend if you're going to be buying new machines, used machines, where you're going to be buying your product from. Uh, so there is quite, you know, a bit to it. But for example, if you want to buy a used machine, you can find a used soda machine for like 300 bucks. Oh, wow. Yeah. So you can get into it really, really cheap. Now, at the same time, those are older, you know, soda machines. Yeah. You and, probably, uh, they probably don't have like the credit card a- a- option that, this, that the new yeah, ones have. Yeah, that's right. Like that. Yeah. So some older machines, you can't even add a credit card reader to it. They each, a new machine and a used machine, they each have their pros and cons. Mm. In my opinion, if you have the money to buy a new machine, I would just because number one, it's a brand new machine. You know, it's going to work from day one. Number two, it can help you get into better locations because if you have a, a older used snack yeah. machine compared to a new one, you know, you can't just put the older snack next to it. Yeah. Like a nice hotel or yeah. a nice, yeah. nice place. Yeah, exactly. That makes sense. That makes sense. Um, all right. So that's how much to start like for, for the, like the major players in the game. Let's get down to like the, the, the type of figures that people are making. Mm-hmm. Like how much could like um, do like the top guys make? Um, in the vending business, like how much could can, money would they make in like a month mm-hmm. or like for like a year? So right now, one of the biggest vending companies out there, it's a corporate business and it's called Canteen. Mm-hmm. And I'm, sh- I'm sure they make millions every single year. Um, yeah. They're pretty much all over the U.S. in a bunch of big, they have contracts with big businesses. And, you know, they're, they're the big dogs in vending. But there, you can definitely still make a lot of money even just doing this by yourself. For example, um, earlier this year, I bought three three machines from this one guy that lived in Oklahoma, which was like four or five hours from from where I live. And he came over, he dropped off the machines. We were talking, and I was like, "Hey, you know, do you do vending or like why are you selling them?" And he just he was just selling them because he would just wants to get rid of them. But he was telling me that he has a vending machine business with over like 300 machines on location. Wow. And of course, I didn't ask him like how much money, you know, he was making, but he was telling me he has three or four route drivers and wow. he, he started like, he told me he started around my age and he's been doing it for 20, 30 years. Um, but I mean, yeah, you can, you can pretty much grow this business as big as you want. You can eventually expand into other areas, other states. And again, you know, it's sky's the limit. No, that's, that's incredible. I think, um, it's a lot to kind of digest to, yeah. to kind of like wrap your head around because it's something that every, we've seen vending machines our entire lives. So it, it yeah, makes yeah, yeah. sense. Just the idea like, Oh, okay. But I feel like everyone probably thought like a vending machine was owned by some, this was owned by some big corporation, yeah, 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 yeah. you know, not some, you know, 20 year old kid <laughs> doing <laughs> so YouTube much. videos in his basement. <laughs> uh, but no, I mean, that's inspiring. I think that's kind of like the, the whole reason why we do this show. Like we want to show people that, the things that you know are right in front of you that you don't notice you know some you could be doing it you could be the owner of that you could be the uh, that could be the passive income that gets you out of whatever situation you're in um and just to kind of bring things full circle um one thing we ask all our guests on every episode um is like what's your hustler mantra so like what's the what's the one statement or phrase that you kind of live by um that kind of keeps you keeps you going and, and on track um, honestly, I don't have a, a certain phrase or anything I really go by. I mean, I, I did say this earlier, the my biggest thing that drives me to keep going and to work hard is just motivation and to see how, how big I can actually grow my vending business um, and everything else. Yeah, it's just motivation. That's the biggest thing for me. Motivation's but, a phrase. For sure. For sure. <laughs> it's a Young Jeezy album. Right? <laughs> it's like before your time, I'm showing my age. Yeah. <laughs> motivation, man. You You heard it, man. Um, incredible story, bro. I mean, like I said, I have no doubt in my mind, your course is going to be successful. You have so much 
that you cannot yeah. accomplish. Like mm-hmm. next five years is going to dwarf the past five years. I, I I guarantee it, man. You're you're completely set up, head screwed on straight, and your your ambition. I mean, the sky's the limit, like Fee said, man. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, just, thank you, thank yeah, you. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, we're definitely gonna you know want to have you back in a couple you know a couple years from now to kind of catch up and see where you're at, see what see what you're selling. See after what you, you after you buy canteen. After you buy canteen, yeah, <laughs> you could tell us what you could. What's the next thing you could fit in a vending machine? I've seen, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen sneakers and vending machines. I see them all now. So there's, uh, there's vending machines that even sell live fish. What? See? Yeah, they they put those around like fishing areas. I'm not sure what state. I was gonna fly down to Check one that I, I saw just to make a video about it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, please do, and then you do make sure you tag 99 Hustles for the word. Uh, for the word. Okay, so. Uh, hey, bro. I mean, once again, man, appreciate you being on the show. Uh, uh, incredible story. Definitely look forward to catching up with you in the future and, and see what you got going on, man. Um, we'll be definitely sure to, to link your, your YouTube yeah, page. Yeah, YouTube. Uh, can you, if you could shout out yeah. your YouTube real quick for, for our listeners. So people yeah, know so where to find you. It's called Jaime Ibanez, or you can also type in vending machine on YouTube. And you pop up. <laughs> <laughs> my, my man's so big, you just type in vending machines and he pops like, up. I got the algos on lock. <laughs> we, call that, we call that a humble flex. We call humble, that a humble flex. flex. Humble yeah. flex. All, right. All right, Jaime, appreciate it, man. Uh, thanks again for being on the show, and uh, definitely look forward to hearing what you got going on next, man. For sure. Of course. Man. Thank you so much for having me. All right, All right, man. Good hustles. Yeah.